Thank you so much for joining me on my program once again. I appreciate you wherever you are joining me from. I say good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Accept my greeting according to your time zone. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please kindly subscribe to my channel. Click the notification bell so that you'll be notified each time I upload a video. You can be among the first to receive it. Then go to the comment section at all time. Leave your comment. Drop your contribution. If you have suggestions, make it out there. If you have any criticism, put it down on the comment section. It will make us to get better. Presenting you a better program. Thank it you. happened in 19, 1964 elections. The West resisted the MPC. And it led to the Western Nigeria House of Assembly crisis. Which led to the coup of 1966. The counter coup of 1966 and the civil war that broke out in 1967. It happened again in 1993. This is exactly 30 years Chief M.K. Abiola of blessed memory won that free and fair elections. Still, the political class refused to allow peace to reign in Nigeria. In collaboration with their friends in the military, they torpedoed the will of Nigerians. That led to the June 12th crisis, and that led to a lot of the death of Abiola, the death of Abacha, and all those things. God, in his infinite mercy, saved this country. 30 years down the line, 2023, what has been crying is still crying again. The political class has refused to grow beyond ethnicity. They have refused to allow Nigeria to metamorphose into a full-fledged nation state. They have refused to accept the will of the people. What they want is a Nigeria that is within their control and the prisms. And it cannot work that way. If they go the way they did in 1993, and the way they did in 1964, what happened then, and what happened in, 19, in 1993, will happen again. There is an ominous sign, in fact, right inside my handset, this handset, in Jakonde Estate here, the Bale of Bara, someone the residence, and was issuing threat and warnings. Right here, I have the voice note. Call them together. Bring your PVCs. If you don't vote for our, our, our candidate, this will happen. You see, Nigerians are tired of this ethno-religious politics. There is no religion. There is, if you go to the market to buy your okra or to buy your rice, you cannot buy it cheap because you are a Christian or you are a Muslim. You cannot buy fuel because you are a Christian or you are a Muslim. You cannot buy rice cheaper because you are a Christian or a Muslim. Naira is about 800 or something Naira to one dollar. All of us are suffering it. But when it is time for Nigerians to rise, when it is time for Nigerians to choose a leader that will move this country forward, like other nations, the ethnic jingoists, the religious bigots within us, we use religious and ethnic colorations to destroy the will of the Nigerian people. And that has kept Nigeria down. In 2023, is this cloud still there? Yes, it is there. And that is my fear. And that is the fear of every reasonable and concerned true Nigerian. And we want to, I want to personally use this platform to beg them to please allow Nigeria breathe a new air. Respect the wish of Nigerians. Every, yesterday was Friday. These guys went to mosque to pray to God. Tomorrow is Sunday. They will go to church to pray to God. And after that, they will not, they, they play God. If you now assume God, why go and play, why go and pray to God? If you are God to Nigerians, because of the privileged position God has given you, you play God. Then why do you go to church and mosque to pray to the same God? They should allow, Nigerians have suffered terribly. Nigeria has become a laughing stock. And I charge Nigerians out there, please don't fall for their antics. They want to provoke Nigerians to riot. They want to provoke Nigerians to take laws into their hands. They should resist them, endure. No matter the level of provocation, get your PVC and unleash your anger on the 25th of February and in all relations. Unleash your anger. All right. Um... The Inspector General of Police. I'm talking about IGF, Uzma Baba, has actually set up an election planning, monitoring, and evaluation team for the deployment across the states here in the Federation. And it says they are to analyze, identify, and mitigate threats, as well as take out on-the-spot assessments of 
security issues. My question is, do you think that will be enough to be able to safeguard the lives of citizens and put their mind at rest so that they can go out on the 25th to exercise their franchise? Well, uh, it's commendable, but it's not enough. Certainly not enough. And I want the uh, other countries, the EU, all over all countries of the world, to copy what America have done. They should identify these characters who are agents of anti-democratic forces in Nigeria, who are determined to keep Nigeria perpetually down because of their greed for material things. Identify them and give timely warning, diplomatic warning. It is time to do it. Because if you listen to the tape, which I have, the, 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 the ballet of Ubara mentioned that he is acting on orders, that he cannot allow his source of income and that of his family to be jeopardized. Who is giving these orders? Who? Who? The security forces should move in now. And it has become imperative, maybe after this election, that all the security institutions and their, uh, 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 their training institutions should commission a study into who is actually the enemy of this country. Our enemies are more internal than external. Those who elevate personal and ethnic interests above the interests of Nigeria are enemies of this country. It is important to commission a study to make it an, an, an object of study in our security training institutions and fashion out a way to nip this into the board. They have held this country for far, for far too long on, on the ground. This country is a giant. This country should be allowed to breathe. This country should be allowed to live its potentials. This country should be allowed to lead Africa. Very good, Captain. If I may come in right now. Um, regarding the elections, uh, INEC once voiced out uh, concern not too long ago regarding some of these offices that were burnt, if you remember, in the southeast and in some other parts uh, of the country as well. And, uh, and if you remember <coughs> as well, sometime last year, I don't think uh, too much attention was paid to it, uh, the army, uh, I think the army chief also voiced concern that the security forces might be under pressure uh, over the elections as well. I don't think uh, much attention was also paid to that. So when you hear things like this coming up every now and then, where is the role of intelligence? You always talked about this uh, issue about this ballet and everything, meaning somebody out there from mm -hmm. within from is within. acting. So is it a problem of political will to act? and apprehend, the other time they said, okay, fine, 400 uh, people were involved in uh, uh, terrorism, as it were. This was last year or about two years ago as well. We don't know who the people are, you know. They're just mentioning all of this. So when you hear things like this, you know there's a problem on the ground, but is it the, uh, the political will to act or there's something more to it? Or we're just like, okay, laid back and just let it happen? But you've nailed it. Is there a lack of political will? There is nobody in this country that doesn't know the truth. And um, no matter how what people do, this country has come to stay. One day, one day, monkey go go market, you know, go return. A pan-Nigerian president will emerge that will fix this country, introduce law and order, enforce it, and banish ethnic and religious considerations. It is lack of political because in all our thoughts, even in the highest level of decision making, people prefer when they look at you those involved, they look they run a true, a tribal true, a tribal uh, analysis. And it, it is my own, it is my own. But when it is their own, when you go there, you loot. When it is time for you to get power, you sell ethnic card, you sell religious card, and when you get it, if you are People who are loyal to you, who are of your ethnic and religious stock, uh, stock, are well off. You will be happy. But the truth is that they use this ethnic, religious thing to blind all Nigerians. The major problem, the greatest danger and enemies of this country, they are not even all these um, uh, uh, non-state actors. They are even those at the corridor of power. Those who see the good things and they refuse to do it. Those who look at Nigeria from ethnic prism. Those who, who look at Nigerian national issues from tribal perspective. Those who look at Nigerian national issues from 
religious perspective, they are the true enemies of this country. And if we can get it right by, by getting a pan-Nigerian leader in 2023, if the Nigerian people can be able to endure these provocations, no fuel, no cash, not, just nothing, people are suffering, feeding from hand to mouth. As I was coming here, one funny thing happened. From, uh, from Lakey Gardens, my side, to what do you call it, uh, Festo Gate, I spent two hours. I even had to come down, leave, left my car with my driver and entered Okada to be able to meet with this time. It is as bad as that. The level of suffering is terrible and unbearable. But Nigerians should please maintain calm. This bottled anger that is hovering, they should go to the pools and they vote for a candidate of their choice and they protect the vote until it is announced. All right, okay, we know you're a governorship candidate under the Labour Party for Imo State. Yes, I am. And let's talk about your state, because the heightened sense of insecurity in your state is very alarming. Very, very. And as a matter of fact, um, the governor, the Hope is on Deba, has been quoted saying that politicians should be held responsible for the level of insecurity in Imo State. Do you agree with him? I agree with him including him. I agree with him, including him. The governor is supposed to be the chief secretary of the state. Yes. If the state is good, he takes credit. If it is bad, he takes credit. True. He should have a sober reflection and ask himself, was this the state he met? Even those of us who has, who has military training, we are told not to bring force first. The idea of bringing force as an instrument to maintain peace is an act of cowardice. Because at the end of the day, every conflict ends on the table. Yeah. So if he says politicians, yes, I agree with him, because himself is a politician. And he knows what to do. You see, there is no life that is worth being lost. Are you accusing him of foisting the insecurity? He said the, poli he said the politicians. Yes, he said the politicians. Including himself. Okay. So he has said it all. So if politicians are the people responsible for the breach of insecurity, it is sad, very alarming. I came from the East, and if you go to Imo, a situation where people even play football with whom I heard. It is terrible, and it is condemned. And the Imo state, if Imo fails to get it right in the next coming government, that's what some of us are running. In the next governorship election, there may not be an Imo state without the federal government being forced to declare a, sense of a state of security emergency. It is very bad. Hopefully, we will get it right after these elections, and of course, Let, let's uh, hope so. And that is why the, the best Imo should go for the best of hands at this hour to rescue recover the state and position the state back as one of the lead remember before Imo State used to be the cleanest state in Nigeria? Yeah. Imo State used to be the best in education. Today Imo is number 35 out of 36 per GDP in both education and health. Today according to Nigerian Bureau of Statistics Imo State is the sixth most indebted state. Imo State is the number six in terms of indebtedness. So and Imo State is about 60% unemployed. 57.6. My mathematics is that anything above, above the power of half is equals to one. So one can easily say that Imo State has 60% oh, unemployment rate. Very good. On that note, hopefully people will vote uh, wisely in these uh, elections mm -hmm. and elect uh, true leaders. Uh, Captain.